Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Delicious. Today is Tuesday, June 6th. And I meant to mention this yesterday and then sort of segued off into my various things about the wedding. But one of the things that I've discovered about saying epic fantasy romance to people who especially to people who don't um, know genres or subgenres is that it communicates better for whatever reason uh, it comes closest to transmitting what I do and I discovered this talking to so many people at Megan and Charlie's wedding uh, who I'd never met before. I had to learn so many new names and I kept getting them wrong. I'd like get half of the couple, right? You know, I'd say things like, um, Mary and Joe and they're like, you mean Mary and Andy? <laughs> like, yes, <laughs> I thought I did really well though. I came close. Um, but anyway, you know, people would ask me, how do you know me again? I know Megan from the writing world. Um, yes, I'm a writer. What do I write? And it's funny when you say fantasy, um, people have a weird reaction when you say you write fantasy the, and I'm talking to like John you know John Q public people who are not like part of the community reader or writer they go right to like erotic fantasy I don't know why but if you say if I say I write fantasy they'll be like they give they'll like give me the eyebrow waggle and I'll be like what kind of fantasy um <laughs> in exactly that tone of voice too. Yeah. So, and if you say write romance, um, that's just, you know, it's not that I don't want to own that. I write romance, but people tend to then dismiss it as nothing. If I say I write fantasy romance, um, it's it's almost like it doubles up, but then it comes out like even more erotic or weird. But if I put the word epic in front, if I say epic fantasy or epic fantasy romance, then they don't go to that weird, what kind of fantasy space. And they actually find it kind of cool. So, so yeah. Um, Hummingbird. <laughs> One thing about the transcript, and and I, you guys know that I really try very hard not to um, spend too much time editing the t transcript because I can't be spending my days editing transcripts. But it puts in a none when it can't pick out the word, which it often does on the numbers. I was like, why are the numbers so freaking hard for you? But I've learned to search for none. But if there's a random none in there, that's why. if it can't figure out what I'm saying it'll do none also but it picks out none on weird words like first who knows but it'll attempt my name attempt my name and get it wrong every time but it still attempts it AIs what can you do it's a little bit um breezy here this morning we may get some clouds and some rain this afternoon cross your fingers I was talking with assistant Kareen. Transcript never gets her name right. I try to catch them all. I really do. I know I miss some. Uh, and she said that it had finally dried out after more than a day of rain. And I was like, I would love a day of rain. If only we could like move things around to different parts of the world. I feel like this should be within our technological grasp and it probably is it's probably just that there's no money for it. Oh, nice cool breeze though. It got warm yesterday. Yesterday was our first hot day and we're supposed to get up to 88 today. So ah, just blew something into my eye. There we go. So um, I did finish the revision yesterday. And uh, woohoo! Yeah, I I did a long day. I did five hours, almost five hours. Let's 
throw out some numbers to confuse the transcript. So I ended up at 108,496 words all told long, right? Easily (laughs) 10,000 words longer than what I had been hoping shooting for. And oh, I didn't quite do this right yesterday. Let's see if I can get the I might not be able to get the calculation done. Yeah, I have it have the formula set on the wrong cells there. So let's see I did um one two three four I did four and a half hours of work and um started at 8 56 ended up at 3 22 there was that one hour break in between to talk with the gal about platforms author reader platforms. So it was a longish day but I wasn't totally wasted either that or I'm like on reserves at this point. I'll be very interested to see how the out loud proof goes. I have a fairly hard stop tomorrow um because we are going to go get our second booster fourth COVID shot at five so I have to send this off for formatting it by like a quarter to five four thirty probably. But um Corrine did send out or I told her she could send out the um arcs of the finished book on corrected proofs. So if you get one and you uh find any typos let me know. Don't tell me after the book is published please or tell me don't tell Amazon. Fortunately I do write pretty clean so I'm not I'm not too worried about it. Um yeah so getting those things done I've got the covers for covenant of thorns those are done pretty awesome and bought new ISBNs I got um 500 of them for or no I got a hundred of them for five hundred and seventy five dollars. So five seventy five each um the transcripts going to hate me. So that was actually a pretty good deal and now I'll be set again for for quite a while um and now I have to pay for those three covers but hey I'm made of money right reader I am not made of money. <laughs> oh well um at least it's tax deductible right business expenses got to spend money to make money and what else um I could sing you a song. Uh, apologies for the earworm yesterday. I was amused at how many of you did know that song and uh, were earwormed by it. So I did have something else I was going to say. What was it? It's just flown out of my head. I was going to tell you a story about something. Maybe I'll pause. I know if I gave it a minute I would remember what it was. I was going to talk more about the platform thing. So this gal is a author and is looking to create something better than Goodreads. Um a platform for authors and readers to interact and you know I've been around long enough which is funny to me that I have been around long enough (laughs) that it's like you know that I could tell her about various iterations of this kind of thing that people have started and I told her that one of the ongoing problems with trying to create like the new social media website which people try to do all the time right you know it's oh we hate Facebook so we're going to create the new Facebook. Um the reason why we all keep doing Facebook even though we all kind of hate 
Facebook. I don't know anybody who says, I love Facebook. Um, <laughs> but we do it because everybody's there. And when you start a new interactive website with people, it's the huge hump is to get people to go there because people won't go there unless other people are there. And so you can't get people to go there until other people are there. And it's, it's a catch 22. It's a cycle, a vicious cycle, right? So, you know, I felt like I was telling her stuff that she already knew, but she said it was helpful. So I was like, okay. Um, and she wanted to, wants to make a site and she probably has the technical know-how from what she told me. And she's got people interested and a business partner and all of that. Uh, she, she wants to make a place that's friendly for both readers and authors. And she spent some time talking about how, uh, you know, Goodreads is so awful and that nobody goes to Goodreads anymore. And I'm not sure that's true. And I told her, I said, I didn't think that was true. Um, but I also don't feel like Goodreads is toxic. Like so many authors do. Um, yeah, I, I have never had a problem with, with Goodreads. I mean, we've had to do some stuff, stuff to adjust, to stop, uh, people from trolling with like the one star reviews, but for the most part, um, you know, I guess I just feel like there's nothing wrong with readers having a place to say what they like about a book. Um, and, and I brought this example up to her. I said, you know, certainly there've been many times when I have read a book and sometimes I obliquely complain about it on here cause I don't want to out the author, but there are times when I read something and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I want to talk to somebody about that. It's like, somebody tell me why, you know, what, what's going on here? Why is this such a mess? Um, you know, it's, it's an emotional thing and you want to be able to share that with people. And, and she started talking about things like cancel culture, which I just have a real problem with people talking about cancel culture because I don't believe that there is cancel culture. I think that it's people who don't like being called out for stuff, call it cancel culture. Um, uh, you know, and then somebody is canceled as if this is some sort of irrevocable status that you can't come back from. Um, are people unfairly piled on, on social media? Sure. Can it be awful? Oh yeah. Um, are people trolled? Sure. But the term cancel culture is being used in such a broad sweep these days. And it's, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, Harvey Weinstein was canceled and Bill Cosby was canceled and all of this. And it's like, no, no, no. Speaking out against people who do nasty shit is not cancel culture. That's, that's bringing stuff into the light that people don't want brought into the light. Now, you know, is it different if it's, you know, like somebody writes a book and you don't like the way they did it? Well, sure. I mean, that's, you know, certainly not the same degree, but people should still be able to have that conversation. Um, you know, and, 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 and that's, that's free speech. And, and it's the thing that we, we keep going around about with free speech that, uh, you know, people feel like want to come back to this, right? That I can say whatever I want. And, and yes, you do have that right. Um, people don't have to listen to you. Um, and that's where we draw the line. And that's, that's how we create safe spaces is that we say, uh, we cannot stop you from, for example, using a racial slur. Sure. It is your right to use a racial slur, but we will not give you the platform then to, to speak it from. And I'm sort of getting tangled up in this a little bit. I think, um, readers getting really upset about an author and piling on and saying that they don't like the way something was written. Yeah. It affects someone's livelihood 
and the, and that sucks but but isn't that part of life and also you know if a whole lot of people are buying and reading a book and saying that they're mad about it is that awful um I mean there's shades here but anyway that's a little bit off of what I wanted to talk about which is you know she she was interested in creating a place that's like positive for both readers and authors and which sounds good on the outset but I was pointing out to her I mean ask me the question and I'll give you an honest answer right I said you know those two things are not necessarily compatible because authors want and and I want it I want five stars all the time every time I want everyone to say my books are perfect and wonderful and for every single person in the world to buy them and read them and love them that's my ideal right um I know it's not realistic but sure that's what I want I don't want people to trash my books I don't want people to to hate my books or to um, say that they're stupid or something like that so if you have a place where okay authors want readers to just celebrate their books and recommend them and everybody loves them and buys them great readers want to be able to figure out which books they'll like to read and they want to be able to discuss the books both the good and the bad and that's not necessarily compatible with having um you know authors be totally happy and I suspect that part of what she's wanting to get at is you know like talking about oh well Goodreads is a toxic place because they they pile on and they rant about books and it's like well you know how are you going to create a place that is only making authors happy where the readers only come to to say nice things it's um you know that's just like a a fan group right which sure sure that could be fun but um I don't know it was interesting because she was making me think she was asking me you know like how I interact with my readers hi readers um you know and how how I hear from you and I was saying you know like a lot of people comment on the podcast and or send me messages in various media and and I was sort of listing all the places and and <coughs> excuse me now I'm choked up no that was choking on my coffee I said you know what some of you have asked me where should you comment or where should you send messages and I am perfectly fine with you doing it anywhere I I like hearing back from you guys but I've also noticed um and I and I said this to her that I think that you know like the early 2010s we were so much on social media and there was so much commenting and replying and so forth and then you know like the 2016 election happened with all of the trash on social media and I think a lot of us just stopped participating as heavily and, and I don't hear back from people as much and I'm I don't have any kind of quantitative measure of that but I I sell more books than I did then so I don't think that it's that people aren't reading the books I think that people just aren't engaging via social media as much and then also I used to interact with people at conferences I used to see all of you at conferences or various reader events and now I don't anymore um so it would be very interesting to re-experience that you know now that pandemic is over air quotes uh, to see you all at a polycon speaking of there's only a week left to order if you want to pre-order books I will have books there but if you want to make sure that you get a copy of a print copy of something in particular let me know and I will um, you can pre-order it I, I'll put the I think the link is on the show notes but I'll make sure to do it and I'll advertise that this week so um I think that's everything yeah and I'm going to put that recipe for the low sugar blueberry pie that y'all were interested in um I don't know why I have to say that in a southern accent I'm going to put that in the next newsletter too so if you haven't signed up for the newsletter do that I never tell people to 
uh, sign up or I don't do it as often as I should. But I think we'll get a newsletter out a dispatch um, before that a polycon order deadline just to remind everyone. All right so um I'm going to get going on this out loud proofing wish me luck right I will talk to you all Thursday you all take care bye bye.